Hello everyone, so I'm making this video as a response to the first color grading video that did so well on my YouTube, on my TikTok, and on my Instagram. And I just want to say thank you for the amount of people that bought Quick Film and to the people that have been asking to collaborate with me. I'm very happy to see how well it's been received by you guys and I'm very grateful for everyone that has bought it, that has watched it, and that have used it on their projects. And, and this video is for a quick tutorial on how to use quick film. So let's get started. So I have three clips here from my Japan trip back in December. One is in the nighttime. Uh, this is during midday, and this is as well during midday. So we'll start off by applying quick film. So before we start, I'll just like to explain the nose structure and why I put it this way. So we'll start off with the blur and I like to put blur on my images because for one, I think mirrorless cameras these days are too sharp in how they process their images and I like to give it a softer edge for the second reason and in film, usually the grain is much more sharper than the actual images because technically the image is made of the grain it's made from the grain that that's that's the content of the image i don't know if i've if i've explained that for, uh as the best that i could but that's just how i understand it and by blurring it it makes it so that the grain I like to put the, put the blur there and then the halation next just so it also interacts when you put the grain over here. This is a highlight recovery uh, node because usually the halation node that I put, if you put it on the strong setting over here, it brings down the highlights a bit to not affect the overall exposure of your image too much when you turn on the halation. And this is just subtle but if you need more, you can just go over here to your log and turn down the highlights a bit more so you turn this off the exposure doesn't really change that much just the halation effect we'll put this back to low intensity and then i put the grain over here so it, so that as i said earlier since you've already applied all these film effects film uh, attributes to your image the grain just reacts off of it and it you kind of see like how they interact with the highlights and I like putting it before putting the CST the conversion to rank 709 so that when it does convert it to to uh, from log to rec 709 you can see that these effects are more baked in into the image compared to when you put it after everything. It kind of just looks like you slapped it on to the footage, which doesn't make it as believable or as natural as this method does. And then we have the exposure here to change our exposure. For example, this is a bit overexposed. So we'll uh, turn down the gamma. This is how I like to change my exposure with the left gamma gain as I have more control over it. I'm liking that. This is the before, this is the after. See, it's overexposed. Turn this down and we're, we're left with a properly exposed image. So for the white balance, I think I'm happy with this, but if you want to change it, you can just go over to your gain node. And I've set this already to a linear color space so that when you change your white balance, your temperature, your tint, it works linearly at, as to how, pr probably close as to how you would change your white balance in camera. So usually I use my game and let's just play around here and see what we like. Kind of liking this. And then there's a CSD node here to convert your footage to Rec. 709. I'm using a Fujifilm, so I'm using Rec. 2020 as the input color space and Fujifilm F-Log2 as the input gamma. And if you avail only the LUT, 
when you make a node structure, you have to convert it to Rec 709 first because I've made this camera, uh, this LUT to work off of Rec 709 so that uh, it can be universal on any camera. Once you've applied the CST, here's your LUT. Um, and then you have your HSV here. And HSV is just a better way to introduce saturation into your images, unlike adding saturation over here. Because when you're adding saturation over here, it kind of looks digital with how you, with how it handles the image. Because it brightens up your image along with saturating it compared to HSV, which is just giving boosting the saturation levels. But <clears throat> I've noticed um, recently that HSV also bumps up the brightness quite a bit of your images. So what I do to counter that is make a node before it color space HSL channels one and three and then I like to turn this down and then turn this up as you can see it just makes the colors much more denser and then there is a shadows node here that fixes your shadows if it's a bit too blue because the LUT uh, I've made has quite of a bl uh, quite a strong blue tint in the shadows so if you want if you don't want that you can just turn this on and it'll fix it for you i like the blue shadow so i'll keep it there and then this the contrast node is just for additional contrast after you've done everything else uh, usually i like using the curves here because uh, it allows for more control for me to to move my image around like for example you can just do like whatever you know but you're not gonna do that so usually i like bumping up the blacks to a little bit more of a faded look and then bring the shadows back down uh, i like bumping the midtones quite a bit and then i just like to see how this reacts how the light reacts to this and once i land it on something i like you can add a glow effect here as well and with this glow effect it's set to soft light because instead of adding just glow on everything i think it make adds a bit more contrast and makes it pop but if you don't like this you could just put it on screen where is it screen which adds the traditional glow effect and is a little secret here is another method as to how i apply a glow so i make a sorry i make a serial node and i press alt l to make a layer node i right click this turn the composite mode to screen and then add a gaussian blur on the top node blur it how much i like then i go over to my curves and then just turn this down makes it glowier so here's the before and here's the after okay i'll speed it up a bit for the next few clips we'll apply quick film i like the exposure just turn it down quite a bit and then we'll fix our contrast and add an hsl over here see that's how that's the effect of doing the HSL HSV combo maybe turn this back to screen because I like the glow there you go that's usually my workflow with this power grade it's very quick and it, and it gets stuff done and onto our next clip we'll apply quick film again for this I notice it's a bit overexposed so I'll turn this down bump the gamma up quite a bit to reduce the contrast so I can reintroduce it over here and I have more control over the image there you go if you want to play around the white balance over here you can have it be warmer like this this back to screen for a more dreamy effect and there you go 
I hope you enjoy and I hope you learned something from this video and if you've availed quick film I want to say thank you very much and if you haven't yet there is a discount code uh, you can use code early to get 25% off of purchase and this is only available until March 7 so you should get it now if you want 25% off of the product and anyway thank you very much please subscribe like comment and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.